Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we'll be taking a look at the Night Fae Covenant for Death Knights. I already did one of these Covenant videos, the Venthyr one, you can check it out if you want. I did that one first because it was looking quite strong for Breath of Sindragosa Frost DK, and also pretty good for Blood DK. The Night Fae, however, does seem to be the all-around option that seems to be pretty good, uh, regardless of the spec you play. There's going to be quite a few pretty strong interactions that happen with the Covenant ability or the class-specific Covenant ability that you get. Um, some of our talents, legendaries, and the soul binds. So, jumping straight into it, the general Covenant ability you get, that is the mobility one, is called Soul Shape. You turn into a fox for 12 seconds, um, and you can blink forward. That's on a 4 second cooldown, I believe. Typically, you can get three blinks in. Um, also, it's important to note that you can still fight while you're in this um, form. So it's not like exclusive where you're either uh, gaining mobility or you're doing damage, like an Enhancement Shaman, for example, in Ghost Wolf or something along those lines. You can still do your regular rotation while you're in Soul Shape. Um, and then the reason why it's permanent is because in resting areas, the debuff doesn't time out, but normally it only lasts 12 seconds. So it's a pretty nice little mobility addition to DK. It's not as good as the Venthyr one, but it's definitely nothing to be overlooked. Uh, transforming, you gain a little bit of movement speed, and then also the short blinks that you can do between are quite useful in specific scenarios. Then the class specific ability we get is a little bit buggy here because um, the tooltips don't work correctly, but it's called Death's Dew and it replaces our Death and Decay. And whenever you drop it, it looks like this. It works the exact same way as Death and Decay. It has the same cooldown, the same duration, and the same interaction that Death and Decay does. So for Unholy, while you're in your Death's Dew, you can cleave your Scourge Strike. And if you're blood, you can cleave your heart strike. So that's is going to be quite an important ability because a lot of the soul binds, um, traits, and even legendaries can be tied into it to make your death and decay or death's do a rotational ability on all three of the specs. That includes frost. So normally for frost, you never death and decay, but if you're playing night fey. There are so many interactions and buffs that you get from dropping your Death's Dew that it's going to be worth using. So one very important thing to know about Death's Dew is that whenever you drop it, it leeches strength from targets it hits. So it normally leeches 1% strength per tick per target. So if you're on single target, you can stack it up to 10 stacks. Um, by the time that your death and decay is over and then for 15 seconds after that you get uh, the percent strength that you gained on aoe this will ramp up a lot faster like i said because it depends on how many targets you have so by the time your death and decay is ticked two or three times you will be at max strength and then the strength will keep refreshing until your death and decay is over and then from there it's going to last another 15 seconds so that is the first super important interaction that Death's Do has with our spec. It's simply gaining strength by hitting enemies with it. And that's going to be super important both for Unholy and for Frost. And then for Blood, it's really nice because obviously as a Blood DK, you can drop your Death and Decay way more often because of your Crimson Scourge procs than any of the other specs. So you end up having a much higher uptime on that percent strength that you gain from Death's Do. So with that out of the way, let's look at the soul binds. Um, I'm not going to talk about conduits. You can find my separate video on that um, on my channel. So the first one we have here is Naya. And like you probably know, a lot of these soul binds are purely utility or like RP soul binds, but there are a few that are quite strong um, and do provide actual throughput. So in the first row, we have Silvari Mantle. When Soul Shape ends, you are concealed until you move. So it's essentially like a Shadow Meld. Um, it works a lot of the same ways. Then you have Stay on the Move. Defeating an enemy reduces Soul Shape's cooldown by one second. So instead of a 1.5 minute cooldown, you just get some nice CDR on it. In Tier 2, we have Naya's Tools. 
And the first one is Burrs. Your damaging attacks and spells have a chance to toss Naya's spiked Burrs under your target. The Burrs latch onto the first enemy to cross them, reducing their movement speed by 20% and inflicting nature damage over 6 seconds. So it's just a little bit of an extra throughput that you get. Then we have Poison. Your interrupts apply Naya's Paralytic Poison to your target, dealing nature damage over 30 seconds. Targets with Naya's Paralytic Poison take an additional uh, amount of nature damage if interrupted once more. So situationally, this could actually be better than the Burrs. Uh, this is going to come down purely to tuning and also purely to the situation that you find yourself in. If you're doing a boss fight where you can never use your interrupt successfully, then this Soulbind is absolutely useless. However, if you're doing a boss fight where you're constantly interrupting, then this Poison Soulbind is actually going to be quite strong. Then we have Herbs. Your helpful spells have a chance to apply Naya's Invigorating Herbs, increasing the target's haste by 95 for 20 seconds. So for healers, this might actually be quite useful um, if you're looking for extra utility to help out your party or your raid. And then moving down to the second to last row, we have Care Package. Naya periodically sends you herbs to aid when you complete activities what that contribute to your Great Vault. So in every single covenant, there is going to be a resource, Soulbind, and this is it for the Night Fae. Then we have Swift Patrol. Movement speed is increased by 20% for 2 minutes after defeating an enemy. Combat cancels this effect. So this one's actually quite nice for Mythic Plus and dungeons in general, because there tends to be quite a bit of downtime between packs while you're moving, and that's where DK tends to fall a little bit behind. Everyone has their sprint, their leaps, their mobility or whatever. Uh, but having just 20% increased movement speed right after you kill a pack is a super nice quality of life change to have. Then in the last tier, we have Grove Invigoration. When you use your Night Fae class ability or spell, you gain 10% mastery slowly fading over 5 minutes. I believe this tooltip is bugged and it actually fades over 3 minutes uh, instead of 5, but it's still super strong. So the huge interaction with the 10% mastery is obviously for Blood, or for Unholy, and for Frost. As Unholy DK, in Mythic Plus in particular, um, you only do your damage once you drop your Death and Decay. Like before Death and Decay, you're typically setting up, you're setting up wounds, you're setting up your dots, um, you're setting up all your cooldowns, and then once you drop your Death and Decay, that's when you start popping off. So getting a 10% mastery boost, the moment you drop your Death and Decay, is absolutely massive to have uh, in Mythic Plus. And it makes your Death and Decay windows, where you're cleaving a bunch of targets, feel significantly stronger than they would without this uh, Soulbind. Um, so for me, Naya seems like the go-to DPS Soulbind. And the 10% Mastery also translates to Frost as well. Um, Whenever you drop your Death's Do ability, you get the 10% Mastery that synergizes super well with Obliterate uh, KM procs, for example, because those do uh, Frost damage. Super good for Breath of Sindragosa. Any Frost damage that you're doing will be amplified, and you're going to be able to keep up this buff, um, basically fluctuating between 7% and 10% as long as you drop your Death's Do on cooldown. So just getting a 7-10% to Mastery buff is absolutely massive. Uh, but moving on to the second Soulbind here, we have Dreamweaver. In the first row, we have Field of Blossoms. When Soul Shape ends, you increase the movement speed of nearby allies by 15% for 15 seconds. Not bad. Uh, general utility that helps your party more than it helps you. Then we have Social Butterfly. Uh, when at least two allies are within 8 yards, your versatility is increased by 5% for 5 seconds. When this expires, two nearby allies gain this bonus for 5 seconds before passing it back to you. So going through these talents, this seems to be either the healer soulbind or the tank soulbind. Uh, versatility is super good on tanks in general, um, and just passing versatility back and forth between you and your party members is quite strong. Then we have soothing voice. When your roots, stuns, and incaps class effects end, your target's movement speed is reduced by 90% decaying rapidly over two seconds. Um, I don't find this too useful. Two seconds seems a little bit slow. If it was like five seconds, um, then I think it would be a lot better. Then we have Empowered uh, Chrysalis. 
10% of your overhealing received or done remains as a shield on the target, up to 15% of the caster's health lasting for 5 seconds. This seems super good for blood decay, because you tend to get a lot of overhealing since you tend to heal yourself and then your healer heals you on top of that. So overhealing turning into a shield on yourself is super good for blood decay, and it's also good for healers in general. Um, just making your overhealing much more efficient instead of all of it being wasted, only 85% of your overhealing is wasted. Um, or 90% rather. Moving down to the second to last tier, we have Fairy Dust. When falling further than 20 yards, Fairy Dust slows your fall. Um, generally just good for world questing, not much combat implications. Uh, then we have Somnambulist. Every one hour spent in a rest area grants you increased gold. From next world quest you complete, stacks up to 5. Again, just a little bit of extra gold that you get from world quests, nothing uh, significant there. And in the last row we have Pod Tender. When you would take damage that would kill you instead of rejuvenate within a wild seed, uh, regaining 30% of your HP over 10 seconds. If the wild seed takes more than 10,000 damage during this time you die, this effect may only occur once every 30 minutes. This could be situationally super good. There are always encounters where you get overkilled by a little bit or encounters where you sacrifice a player. Getting essentially a cheat death for free uh, could be quite important. And also it's going to depend exactly how this works, if it lets you die and res, that's a lot more useful um, for like cheesing mechanics for example, than just acting like a worse cheat death. So that was Dreamweaver, moving on to Karain. In the first row we have Horn of the Wild Hunt. Soul Shape increases the movement speed of allies within 40 yards by 10 seconds. Again, helps out your party a little more. And then we have Wild Hunt's Charge. While out of combat, your Soul Shape's Teleport becomes a charge, stunning your target for 2 seconds and ending your Soul Shape. Uh, might be good for PvP, I don't see it all that great for PvE. Um, especially since generally you Soul Shape in combat because you need the extra mobility and not out of combat. Then in the second tier we have face your foes, when in front of your target your spells and abilities decrease the damage they inflict to you by 2% for 3 seconds. So this might be a decent tanking trait. Then we have first strike, damaging an enemy before they damage you increases your critical strike chance by 10% for 10 seconds. This seems really good on paper, but in practice it's not as good as it sounds. Um, especially mythic plus. You typically run into a pack, you damage them, but then you need to set up your damage. Uh, pretty much all of the specs, except for blood, need to ramp their damage in some sort of way. So getting 10% crit for 10 seconds sounds good, but in reality you will be getting this crit when you haven't been set up yet, so you're not doing your highest uh, portion of your damage yet. But for blood decay this might be okay for an offensive build. Then we have hold the line. After 5 seconds of standing still, you take 10% less physical damage until you move. So this could be situationally really strong for Blood DK. There's plenty of fights that do a lot of melee damage, uh, especially boss encounters. Um, and bosses whose melee swings hurt and you also don't have to move, it could be conceivable that this talent will be quite strong for just mitigating some of the damage you're taking. Moving down to the second to last row, we have Vorkai Sharpening Techniques. Your weapon takes no durability damage. Uh, nothing important. Then we have Get Information. Your mounted movement speed is increased by 3%. Allies behind you within 40 yards gain this benefit. Again, it's a little bit of extra utility that you get, but nothing that uh, has combat implications. And then we have Final Moments. Your healing and damage to targets below 35% health is increased by 3%. When an ally dies, this benefit is increased by 500% for 30 seconds. This enhancement may only occur once every 5 minutes. So think of it like the Red Paladin mechanic, um, I think it was back in Legion. I don't know if it was in BFA because I didn't play that class. But in Legion, if you were a Red Paladin and one of your teammates died, you essentially gained a damage boost for a short duration uh, where you could pop off. This is similar to that. So on raid encounters, especially, proccing this once 
and gaining a huge benefit um, to like your damage and your healing is pretty like useful. Um, I'm not sure if it's as useful as, for example, Naya's traits, but I could see this being a lot better for like healers or even perhaps a blood DK. So overall, I think Karain and Dreamweaver are pretty decent choices for tanks and healers. Dreamweaver seems more of a healer soulbind, Karain seems more like a tank soulbind, and Anaya seems more like the DPS soulbind that you would go for. Uh, but those are the three soulbinds that we can pick, and those were their uh, soulbind traits. And like I said, Night Fae looks like the all-around option. Um, it's not super specific in its class ability um, or covenant abilities that you get so it doesn't have insane synergy with a single build like ventir does with uh, breath of syndragosa frost but this seems to be the all-around option and it's super solid for all three of the specs so especially if you're not sure um, what you what covenant you want to go or you prefer playing all three of the specs and trying different builds Night Face seems like it's going to be a great option for that. One thing that I forgot to mention is that there's a weird interaction between Defile and Death's Due. So if you take the Defile talent, it replaces your Death's Due. So you essentially lose your Covenant ability. Um, and to me, that makes absolutely no sense. If anything, Death's Due should inherit Defile's properties. So it should grow over time if it deals damage. Um, and also uh, deal increased damage with each tick that it grows. So currently, if you take the file, as you can see, it completely replaces your death stew. So I really hope that they look into this because it makes absolutely no sense to have this currently. Um, but that concludes the Night Fey preview for Shadowlands. Keep in mind that everything is still in beta, so things are subject to change, but let me know in the comment section below. What do you think about this covenant? Um, which covenants are you considering going? I know a lot of you in my previous video said that you want to go the Necrolord covenant, and that preview will be coming up pretty soon on this channel, so keep an eye out for it. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.